What does love feel like in private? A kindness, patience, touch, trust, rest, home, listening, forgiving, knowing a friend or partner has your back, doing something for another even if you don't understand it or are inconvenienced by it, like two friends retrieving a donkey because their teacher needs it? Cornell West said, tenderness is what love feels like in private. What then does love feel like or look like in public? Waving someone in in a long, slow line of traffic. Community, a place to belong. An invitation to a party, sharing food. Curiosity and wonder and gratitude at our diverse ways of being. Exchanging smiles in a crosswalk. Signal sounds at crosswalks for the visually impaired. Fully accessible buildings. Equitable access to healthy food and health care. A parade of peace, perhaps, to serve as a subversive foil to a Roman military parade. A trading of swords for palm branches. War horses for humble colts a brutal occupation army for an inclusive community of the vulnerable and excluded. Cornell West said, justice is what love looks like in public. Social justice, restorative, reconciling justice, without whose presence we cannot know peace. Jesus arrives in Jerusalem singing a new song, singing of the seamless connection of love and justice across the personal and public. And yet for the 200,000 or so Jewish pilgrims in Jerusalem there to celebrate the Passover, their liberation from slavery in Egypt so many centuries before, there is something familiar in Jesus' new song. An old prophecy from the book of Zechariah comes to life before them when the long-awaited one would ar arrive riding on a donkey, announcing peace to the nations. Hosanna, save us. This is the moment, the people sing in reply. Make freedom from Rome, that new age of true peace, a reality. Johann Sebastian Bach loved inserting old, well-known hymn tunes into new musical works like he does in the motet that we'll soon hear. A signal, perhaps, to the listener, pay attention, don't miss the heart of it. Zingit Dame Herrn was a funeral piece, a reflection on our mortality, and yet amid this musical procession comes something familiar, a well-known chorale at the time whose words bear a beautiful reminder that though this earthly life may be fleeting, Divine compassion flows to us ceaselessly each moment. Divine love parades on the daily through our hearts and veins and breath. Yet life's reality, full as it is of dashed hopes and expectations, makes us skeptical of the truth of such lovely claims. For many, that first Palm Sunday, the disappointment probably began at the end of the procession that evening. As Mark reports, Jesus, looking around and seeing it was late, retreats to Bethany. Some revolution. But it was. Esteban Salas's Te Deum, the opening piece choir and or orchestra will offer, is a majestic song of triumph, a song of overcoming, of arrival and achievement. So was Jesus' song throughout Palm Sunday and the rest of Holy Week. But the triumph was of powerless love over loveless power. Love's enabling us to endure and overcome in the face of opposition, violence, and hatred. What Jesus achieved was an unflinching commitment to unapologetic love unapologetic in its refusal to keep violence in circulation, unapologetic in its encountering of all people, insisting on their dignity, reminding each of their preciousness despite how the world had convinced them or shamed them to believe otherwise, 
unapologetic in its sharing freely and lavishly because all need it and all are worthy of love. I wonder what Jesus on a donkey would say in our time of endless productivity and never enoughness. Our endless ladder climbing, achieving, performing, and having to prove ourselves. Don't just tell me about your success, status, or position, but tell me how deep, how unapologetic is your love. Yes, it was some revolution that came parading into town that day. Jesus wielding unapologetic love and unarmed truth. It's not only how Jesus entered Jerusalem, of course, but how they entered the world. I love that at the beginning of this Holy Week, the final of Jesus' life, we'll hear claras luces, a viancico, a Christmas carol about Jesus' birth. News of this baby's arrival in a backwater town, far from the seat of power in Jerusalem to a poor working-class family, caused quite the stir. A baby some were calling the Anointed One threw the powers of the day into a violent rage. A baby. A reminder that truth need not be armed, need not be shouted, but whispered, sighed, or cooed. Jesus' birth also shone a clear light on the truth of divine love, a love that identifies with and uplifts the vulnerable, unlovable, and suffering, and finds its way into the world through the edges and those overlooked. A condition of truth, of course, is allowing suffering to speak. 78% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. 11.6 million kids, 16% of our children in this country live in poverty. Racial disparities in health care can determine length of life and infant and mother mortality, job pay, and so much more. I wonder what Jesus on a donkey would say in our time of alternative facts, our time of it's true if I feel it's true. Speak the truth, even if your voice shakes. Resist the intoxicating lie of individualism, echoing Cole Arthur Riley, and sense the injustice or need of one as the unflinching responsibility of the collective. Who is that one in your sphere, in ours? Yes, it was some revolution that came parading into town that day. Jesus wielding unapologetic love, unarmed truth, and unwavering courage. It takes courage to love unapologetically, courage to speak the truth unarmed without pretense, arrogance, or bitterness. It takes courage to name injustice and call out power for neglecting what it was put in power to do. Courage to love even one's enemies when they've forgotten your sacredness. Courage to crisscross Spain on a donkey, like Teresa of Avila did, founding 15 monastery communities for women's education. Courage to demand a livable wage for your staff, like Esteban Salas did at his church in Santiago, Cuba. Courage to make that church a center for music education for impoverished communities. Yes, it takes courage to become a lifeboat for the animal species in peril today, echoing Robin Wall Kimmerer, just as they have been ours since the beginning of time. It takes courage to reconnect with love, knowing all that love may compel us to do, all that love may compel us to become in private and public. Unapologetic love, unarmed truth, unwavering courage. How will we carry these into this Holy Week? What shape will our parade take with love as the Grand Marshal? I wonder what Jesus on a donkey would say in this time of courage deficit. While you're thinking on that, what's a parade without music? Amen.